Psalm chapter 119, verse 65. And if your Psalms are laid out with the Hebrew alphabet, we're at Tate. That's what T E T H, Tate, the whole symbol. Verse 65 Thou, God, has dwelt well with thy servant. personal testimony. O oh Lord, according to thy word. So, God doing well. And we're looking at a man who's written a, a psalm. He doesn't have the New Testament. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm cleaning the house today, so forget it. He doesn't have the New Testament. He's got the law and some of the prophets. And what he does have, he's saying in the word, in at least what we got the law of Moses, we can find that God doeth well in the writing. He did well for the nation of Israel in the book of Exodus. There were some plagues given to the Egyptians while others were not given to the Israelites. God done well. He gave them water. He gave them food. He took care of them the 40 years and the griping and complaining. God's done well. Teach me, God, teach me. God, Lord, verse 65. Good judgment and knowledge. That's exactly what Solomon asked for. When God gave Solomon the blank check, and Solomon's like, Lord, I, I need some wisdom how to deal with your people, how to judge your people. And God was pleased. And the writer of the psalm is, listen, I need good judgment. Because sometimes in the walk, in a Christian walk, we're going down the road and we come to an avenue and it may have two ways, it may have three ways, it may have four ways, it may be a whole hallway with doors. And walking by faith, Lord, <laughs> Where do I go? Which way do I go? And there are times in my life I say, Lord, am I right now, am I where you are pleased? Am I doing right now, what I'm doing right now, does it please you? And that's asking God for judgment. Because if I am not pleasing God right now where I am or what I'm doing, I need to change. And I need to seek God to find out what he wants me to do to please him. I have believed thy commandments. Yeah, that's old. That's the law. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. He's saying, listen, I went astray. Before I was afflicted. After I went astray, God afflicted me to bring me back. He chastised me. He corrected me. I went on a wrong way. And Lord, teach me good judgment so I don't go astray again. And sometimes judgments and happenings in our life for what we think is bad is because God is trying to get us because we've gone astray. It's the loving, kind, dwelt well God. But now I have kept thy word. So God uses pain sometimes to... Hey, you're doing wrong. And when you come back, get in the word more. I can't imagine Christians say, oh, I haven't read the word of God. I don't read the word of God. And you're missing half your walk. Don't, don't even say you're a Christian. Say you're saved. Thou art good, speaking to God. And doest good. So he's good and he does good. God is what he, God does what he is, and God is a character what he does. Teach me thy statutes. Teach me good judgment and teach me thy statutes. It's the Holy Spirit that God uses to inspire us to know what we need to know. Listen, you can read your Bible without your pastor, without your Sunday school teacher, and you can be reading your Bible and God will show you things. 
And if you learn something in church and you learn something in Sunday school, all right, God used the man, but it's the Holy Spirit that gets the credit. Too many people don't give the Holy Spirit enough credit. The proud have forged a lie against me. There's that sin of pride again. What are they doing? They're liars. Why are they lying? To go against the man of God. So, if you're doing right, and there's lies about you, which I've had happen. I've had Christian lies about me. I'm thinking of one instance right now. And the lie was totally proven wrong, and they still kept lying about it. And totally, absolutely proven wrong. Why? Because they're proud. They're pride. They're liars. But I will keep thy precept with all with my whole heart. Lying about you? Keep the word of God. Stay in the word of God. All they that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Marvel not the world hates you. Even if the part of the world is Christians. You just stay in the word. Don't you go astray. Because of them. Because then God may have to afflict you. Stay in the word. There. The ones that forge a lie. The proud. Their heart is fat as grease. That's the only time grease shows up in the Bible. It's a cholesterol. It's, it's a hardening of the heart. It's unhealthy. But you didn't know cholesterol was in the Bible. And it's reference to pride. But I delight in thy law. Lord, their heart is unhealthy. It's a hardened heart. Now they may not have cholesterol. He's saying, you know what? Their heart, their heart is hard. They're unmovable, unchangeable. But Lord, your law, if your law says this and I'm doing that, then I've got to change. That's what he's saying. Lord, the law says thou shalt not bear false witness. What are they doing? They're bearing false witness. What am I doing? I ain't going to lie, Lord. I know what you've said. It is good. Look at verse 68. Thou art good and doest good. Look at verse 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. Go back to verse 16, 67. But I was afflicted and I went astray. You know, he got chastised by God, and he said, that was good. And the God that did it was a good God that doeth good for afflicting me, and I've got back in the words. You know what happens to many Christians who, who backslide, and, and God corrects them, they get angry with God, they get angry with the preacher, they go away, and they don't come back. You know what's remarkable in Pilgrim's Progress? Every time Pilgrim went off in a direction he wasn't supposed to be, or went and did something he wasn't supposed to be. That time like he fell asleep in the arbor. And he starts walking away. And he's like, where's my evidence? Oh, I got to go back and get my evidence. Every single time in Pilgrim's Progress, Pilgrim himself, whoever was with him, faithful or hopeful, he went back to the Word of God. So you notice that in Pilgrim's Progress. Um, I can't remember the, the first guy that goes out that they fall in the slow of this bond. He goes back. He doesn't go back to the word. So it's good for me. I have been afflicted I, that I might learn thy statue. What would he learn? Where he backslid, where he sinned against God? Don't do it again. When dad gives you a beating because mommy says he stole the cookie, don't steal any cookies anymore. And don't steal anymore. When that judge when that judge declares you're going to jail for three years, you're going to go on probation for 15 months, you're going to have to pay $200. Whatever law you broke to stand before that judge, and that judge has declared you guilty, and that judge has put a penalty against you, you are to look at that judge and say, Judge, Yes, sir. I ain't doing that again. I learned my lesson. 
And that's not happening today. It's a joke to be over a, a prison correctional system. Yeah, right. The law of thy mouth, God's mouth, is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. And yet, Judas sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. And the writer of the song said, give me all the gold, give me all the silver. I rather have the law. And look what he's saying, the law of thy mouth. He knows Moses wrote it, but he knows the inspiration of Moses is the very fact is that not Moses, but God gave it to him. It was of God. So he knows that. Yeah, it came from Moses, but God gave it to him. Yud. J-O-D. Yud. Now I'm saving the best I can. Thy hands, God's hands, had made me and fashioned me. So we'll go back to Genesis chapter 2. We're looking at creation. Let's look at Genesis chapter 2. Scripture with scripture, because we don't read the scripture. I say Genesis chapter 2 and give you a verse, but I don't think you would go over there and look it up. I don't think many Christians do that. I know a guy who, who teaches class. Oh, that's what somebody taught me. He, he, he said that the other guy. He don't go check the scriptures. And what he'd been taught by man was wrong. So Genesis 2, 7, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Back to Psalm 119, verse 73. Thy hands. God did not speak to that dirt. God took that dirt in his hands and made man. Scripture is scripture. And fashioned. Remember Aaron? He, he told Moses, yeah, you know, I threw in the golden earrings and out popped this cow. Whoa! Uh, Aaron, let's go see what the Holy Spirit said. Open, oh, open your Bible to Exodus chapter... Aaron, you said you got the gold, you got the gold in your range, and it says you fashioned it, Aaron. It didn't pop out of the thing like, hey, look at me. You fat, you know what, what? Aaron made a golden calf. It looked like a golden calf. It, it, it was, it would look like a golden calf. He made it to be a golden calf. When God, he, he put the nose where the nose goes, he puts where the fingers go, he put where the belly button goes. Oh, well, I mean, he didn't have belly buttons. God took his hands, like Aaron took his hands, Aaron fastened, uh, fashioned the golden calf, and the Bible said in Psalms 119 that you never read, God fashioned us. Now, let's go back to Genesis 1 again. I, want, I got something in the back of my head here. Genesis 1, verse 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life in the fowl that they may fly in the earth he made every living creature and god said verse 24 let the earth bring forth living creatures after his kind cattle verse 20 and 24 of genesis chapter 1 god did not get his hand down and made the animal god said let the earth bring forth out of the earth came the animal god said to the waters from the waters. You know, evolution teaches all life comes from water, not man. Birds and fish come somehow from the water. Man, the writer of Psalms 119, Yud, said God took his hands with the illustration of Aaron, what he did with that golden crap, and he fashioned it. No evolution involved, my friend. You know, that's one of the things you've got to believe to be saved. God is the creator. 
Mary had Jesus by the virgin birth. You got to believe those to be saved. Give me understanding. Now, one thing, so there's, there's knowledge, understanding, there's knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. God gave Solomon two and didn't give him one. I, I don't have that written down right now. The devil lacks. I think I think it's understanding the devil lacks. I think the devil has wisdom. And the devil not the devil definitely knows. The devil knows God. And the devil has wisdom to apply the scriptures wrongfully, but he did it to Eve and he did it to Jesus. I just don't think he under, I don't think the devil understands he's going to go to hell forever. Now he may know he's going to hell. And he may be wise. Listen, in Revelation chapter 12, the devil's cast out of heaven, and he knows he's got a limited time. That understanding is a relationship to God. Listen, to know, I can know how to do something. I can know how to write. Wisdom is, okay, you get a piece of paper and you write something. And understanding would be, I write something so I can give you what the Bible says and you can learn. Now, there are people out there, they know how to write. They write something down on paper and it has no value to God. They make money worldly and all that. And there's no value to God. There's no understanding. That I may learn thy commandments. I want to understand your commandments. I don't want to just know thou shalt not. I don't want to just know. And I don't want to just, all right, honor thy mother and father. Okay. Mom, dad, I respect you. Know, I'm your child. You're, I want to, but I want to know what relationship I can have with those commandments to know them and to do them and what the relationship with God. Honor thy father and mother will be respect. So when you become a child and you're a man and you become a father, that you can show your children, Father God, Lord God Almighty Father, you can show them the father that they don't know yet. Listen, this day coming up this weekend, Father's Day. Really? One out of how many fathers would you just take and throw in a garbage can that you could never take their lives and show Jesus Christ or God the Father at all? They that fear thee will be glad when they see me. Titus 2.13 Now I'm referencing to God and Jesus Christ. But that me, they People that fear thee, God, will be glad when they see me. Because we read it a, a couple uh, nights or last night, the night before. He says, listen, I'm in fellowship with those that love you. I'm in fellowship with those that seek you. I'm in fellowship with those that have the word of God. And those that fear the Lord, when they see me, they're going to be glad because they know we have like fellowship. Because I have hope in thy word. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me because I hope in thy word. Why are they glad to see the psalmist? Because his hope is the word. Titus 2.13 the blessed hope and the coming of our Lord, our great God and Savior. The psalmist is saying, I'm waiting for God to come. And so was Israel when Jesus Christ came. But not for Calvary. Not for Calvary. Look at um, Luke chapter... It's ridiculous to say, though, they were looking for Calvary. I learned this the other day, and I, I keep using it. Um, Luke chapter 19. I think 19. Uh, um, yeah. 
1944. He's talking about the destruction of Jerusalem. And shall lay thee upon the ground, and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, 70 AD, because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. They didn't know about the dying lamb sacrifice. They thought, here comes the Messiah. He's going to kick Rome's butt, and we're going to win. The writer here says, I'm waiting for the Lord to come. The baby Jesus comes into the temple in Simeon. Says, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I've been waiting for you to come. Now, Lord, let me die. Yeah, they were looking for the Messiah. But many have been looking for the Messiah to bring in peace. And Jesus said, I didn't bring in peace. I, I brought division. I know, O oh Lord, that thy judgments are right. What you do, Lord, the judgment. When a man ultimately is judged by God, depart from me, worker of iniquity, I never knew you, and thrown into the lake of fire, that's right. Well, how can that be right? All right. When that man stands before God, the great white throne judgment, God's going to call forth the sower and the water and anybody else. You say, what are you talking about? God's going to call up the man that put the gospel seed in that heart. And God's going to call up the man that watered that seed that was in that heart. And to anybody else. And that man has heard the gospel and how to be saved. And he has rejected Jesus Christ hearing the gospel. Then God is right to cast him off into the lake of fire that burns forever. You say, well, what about the man that never he heard? And the books are open. The men were judged by their works. Not everybody the great white throne judgment is going to the lake of fire. If their name is in the book, Revelation 20, then they, they come out. And that thou in faithfulness, there's faith, has afflicted me. Is that affliction again? God, I am guilty, and you were right in afflicting me, and you were faithful in chastising me. Before we read, oh, that was good. And many people get angry at God when he, when he chastises them. It's for God's good. For us, good. Let, I pray thee, thy merciful kindness be for my comfort. There he is asking for mercy again. Asking for mercy and comfort. You can ask God for that. According to thy word. It's written in the scriptures. Mercy and comfort. Even in the law. And on to thy servant. Listen, if the Jew followed the law, God said there were blessings to be blessed. Your animals shall conceive and bear forth animals. Your families will grow. The ground will grow. This wonderful greatness. But they didn't follow. Let thy tender mercies come unto me. That I may live. He's saying, Lord, I want to live longer. That would be mercy. For thy law is my delight. Let the proud be ashamed. Now, does that sound like that? Does that sound good? How about we match that with a New Testament verse? So do you show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be? Rightly divine the word of truth. You don't rightly divide the word of truth. Guess what you are? You're proud. You're pride. When you mess with the Bible and you deceive others, look at the title. 
Reverend, Doctor, PhD. Listen, the church in Korea, I am a Paul. I am a Silas. For I. For they, the proud, dealt perversely with me without a cause. That's what they did with Jesus. There was no cause for Jesus to be crucified. Pilate said it was for envy. Psalm says it's, it's pride. We're the priest. Who do you think you are? Uh, God who made the priest. But they didn't believe that. So when you got a man that's in a pulpit, or a woman, especially in a pulpit, and they're perversing the people in the congregation, what is the charge? Pride. And I've seen that in so many churches. And I've heard of it so many churches all through the world. And you're not going to sit down behind that pastor's desk and you're not going to tell him what the word of God. I've done that for two pastors. I don't do it no more. I've done it for two pastors. You're not going to tell them because they're God's anointed. Touch my, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. Okay. And in your church is a mess today. Pride. Pride is why a pastor of a worldly church and a congregation, he will not get down and say, God, I like the offerings. I like people taking care of me. I like having a rich church. I like having a blessed church. I like not Re Revelation chapter 3. So besides the perverseness, look, but I will meditate in thy precepts. Thy precepts, the word of God will keep me from pride. He said, what, well, you know, what about the preacher? You say he's got pride and all that. And, well, he's in the Bible. Is he? If he was really in the Bible like he's supposed to be, God would be speaking to his heart as he's reading the scriptures, especially where everywhere there's pride. And either he's not reading the word of God or he's reading the word of God and God's speaking to his heart and he's not listening. Or maybe secretly in his study somewhere, he's not reading the King James Version. Don't think everybody who says they're King James is King James. And let me also add, not everybody who says they're King James actually opens their King James. You can be a King James only if you never open up your Bible. You ain't nobody. I want to add that. That's a little rabbit tail. Let those that fear thee turn unto me. Look at verse 74. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me. Let those that fear thee, let us get together. Let, okay, we're going to be in a congregation. We're going to serve God. And what is the main thing of our congregation? Serving the Lord in fear. There it is. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And those that have not known thy testimonies. Why? So we can teach them. So we can grow them. Let my heart be sound. Entire. Unbroken. A whole heart. In thy statute. The word. That I may. Uh, that I be not ashamed. So do you show yourself approved unto God? A workman does not need to be ashamed, but rightly divine. What guess what he's gotta do that the Christians gotta do? You gotta read and study. And that's exactly what he's doing. You know why many Christians in Christianity today is a big shame? They don't read their Bible. 